All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Chupacabra Tutorials channel. I'm your host, Larry, and today we're back for some more Photoshop tutorials talking about drop shadows. What are they? Why are they important? And all the different sorts of ways that you can start thinking about how to make them. So the number one reason why you want to use drop shadows is the world is full of natural shadows. It's a natural feature of the environment and it, it works for a number of different ways, both helping to make text pop or in the case of some of these other examples I'll use, making an object feel like it naturally fits into its environment and doesn't just look like it's floating. Because if you look at this picture of a shoe, it just kind of looks like it's floating in space. It definitely looks like I just grabbed this off of Google Images and then just slapped it onto the page. It just kind of looks artificial. And sometimes that's what you're going for, but not always. So a lot of the time when you want to create a drop shadow effect, you can do so directly through the Photoshop layers by just clicking on the layer in question. In this case, I just wrote some text that says drop shadow text effect. I can double click it. And this brings up the layer styles menu. And through here, I recommend you take some time to play around with each one of these and see what they do. Through here, you can add a quick drop shadow that just makes a little shadow underneath of the text that we can then drag around if we want, which is actually a nice feature of later versions of Photoshop. And then you can make it so that it looks like there's a light shining on a physical object and then creating some shading underneath of there. Inside of here, you have different blend modes to create different photo effects of the shadow. Most of the time, if you just want a dark shadow, multiply will work pretty nicely. You can determine what angle the light is coming from, whether or not you want to use global illumination. If you use global illumination, all the shadows on all the different objects that have this ticked will all have the exact same angle to them when you drag it around. They all kind of match, which is nice. You don't have to manually go through 50 layers and get them all to match. You can make it so that it's really far away from the object with distance. If you make it really, really large, you can increase the spread so the shadow looks thicker or thinner and more dainty and just kind of faded. And then you can obviously, with size, make the shadow blend in a much wider area, or you can make it small so it's very sharp. If you've got a light directly above the object, and you can see those defined lines. Depending on what the effect that you're going for is going to play off a lot of what you do to create that. So for my purposes, I want to use this to kind of make the text pop, because I got a kind of light colored background, and for readability, Two things help a lot with text. Putting a dark stroke on it, which is where you outline it with a dark line. If I click on stroke, you can kind of see. That's how you add a stroke. And if I zoom way out, it'll make it a lot easier to read that text, especially on a light background. Another thing that you can do is create darkness around it using a drop shadow, which is a lot of the time why I like to use some drop shadow underneath the text so that it kind of pops. It looks kind of cool. It's bing, bang, boom. So that's how the quick and dirty way to add a drop shadow. This works on text, this works on cutouts, this works on shapes. Pretty much anything that isn't filling the entire screen, you can pop a quick drop shadow effect on. If you wanted to create a manual drop shadow where you don't use that, that's where you do things like make a duplicate of the object, make it black, drag it where you want it, then blur it, and then boom, you've got a shadow. So for this example, I picked out a random picture of an Air Jordan off of Google Images. And we're going to add a drop shadow underneath of it manually in two ways. One way that was always really popular when I was in high school was everybody just kind of drew a shadow under it. And then maybe they went over here to filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and they kind of gave it a little bit more blur. And then they just hit Control T to kind of drag that around and see where they wanted it. That way it kind of looks like there's a lot of shadow underneath of the object, and then you can play with the opacity here, bring that down so that it looks more like a natural shadow. And if you really want to mess with it in this regard, 
you can go to transform and then you can go to warp and then with this you can just kind of drag it around so it's exactly where you would imagine a shoe's shadow would be kind of behind it a little bit coming out from under the toe because most of the time when you got a shoe like the toe kind of sits up out in the air when it's brand new let's just say I'm, I'm making this image for like a sales promo and then I can drag that so that the shadow is mostly underneath of the shoe maybe even rotate it a little bit more and then boom that looks more like it would like it's already actually on a little fake table in space as opposed to if I turn it off it kind of looks flat you can put it wherever but it just still looks flat another way that was always in all the Photoshop tutorial books that I was given in school was you hit Control J to make a duplicate of the shoe so you've got two of them in fact if you wanted to line these up so that it looks like there's actually two shoes you could and then just merge those layers together but we still want to make this look like there's a shadow. So another way is hit Control J, make a duplicate, take the one on the bottom, hit Control U, it brings up your hue and saturation panel and just make that bottom layer black. So with this, we can then hit Control T and then drag it around so that, let's say that the light's coming from in front of the shoes drawing a really hard line behind them. Then we just drag it down and back to kind of represent that. And this naturally keeps the shape of the shoe so it looks more like the shadow would look in real life, to a degree. So we go under filter, blur, because shadows generally are a little blurry. You know, they don't have hard lines. You can determine how blurry you want these to be. I think about 23 pixels be good now let's move this whole object down a little and now we can kind of bring down the opacity a little and even create a mask on there and with the brush tool set to a low opacity we could kind of blend back the back half of the shadow because we're like trying to mimic being in a studio and having really harsh lights that might erase a lot of our shadows. And those are a couple different ways that you can manually create different shadows. And you don't have to use just one, like you can mix a, a quick drop shadow with and bring it down so it doesn't look like it's popping out the wrong side. You can mix this with a manual shadow and doing so kind of gives the effect of having multiple lights again like you might have in a studio setting. And the third option that was recently added to Photoshop which is really nice when adding drop shadow effects is you've got multiple drop shadows. So inside of the layer styles panel, let's create our standard drop shadow and we can drag it wherever we like. And now we have the option to create multiple drop shadows. And it's almost like you can create like a blended shadow effect by just creating more. And if we, again, if we unclick use global light, then we can drag these wherever we want. unclick that we'll put this over here and with this you could almost begin to create the effect of a like let's say you're on a stage with this microphone and you've got a really hard light you'll have a shadow on the left a shadow on the right and you'll have some sort of blending in the middle there between the two so here's the original let's turn off global light for you We'll make that really close behind. And then from here, we can even create a duplicate of that. Let's just turn off all of these shadows under the effects here. And let's make this black. Drag it to the background. And then let's do this. We will create a faux effect of having this be 
kind of that stark shadow going on between these objects. May not work. The trouble, the trick with this is you always got to experiment with how you want to do your shadows. Not every way to do them is going to look like what you intend. So that didn't work. So now with this, I can take my other shadows and just drag them back over here. Let's say this one's kind of pushing up over here and it's a little softer. And then this one over here is kind of like this. And you can use these to create different kinds of effects. You could also, you could just make this like a crazy purple blue color and then change this to divide. And then it's like this weird white phantom and using these as more than just shadows is how you start to create layered advanced effects that do different things that you otherwise wouldn't expect. So here we could just do like almost kind of like a chroma effect where I can go to color burn and then make this really bright. And it's almost like we're creating a pseudo 3D advertisement as if we're going to reshow like a Dave Sinatra in 3D glasses at our local theater. So that's three distinctive ways that you can mess around with, well, two and a half, considering multiple shadows is just the layer styles panel. But that's sort of the beginning, advanced and intermediate of working with drop shadows. You're trying to represent a natural real world shadow in a digital space. A lot of people will cheat and they'll use a 3D rendering program to do this with like a 3D model and then they'll use that in photos sometimes. Other times there's actually programs now that use AI to generate shadows inside of photo editors. I tend to just manually put them in myself by drawing them or painting them with a stylus. You have a lot of different options at your disposal, and those are the reasons why you'd want to use them. And so it helps to keep in mind what the environment is that you want to create. What is the purpose of this picture? Is it going to be a sales image? Is it going to be a realistic photo? Does it just need to look like a quick edit and kind of get the gist across and doesn't need super realistic shadows? You're going to have to end up being the judge jury and executioner as to which one of those methods you want to use. So I hope you found this helpful. This has been drop shadow effects inside of Photoshop.